All right, hello and welcome to the Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Debbie Allen, who is in Phoenix, Arizona. How are you doing, Debbie? I'm awesome. Great to be here with you, John, at Sales Pop. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. And, uh, and Debbie is a serial entrepreneur and now somebody who goes around helping others achieve success. She has written a number of books like Confessions of Shameless Self-Promoter, Skyrocketing Sales, The Highly Paid Expert. And now I think it's November, I think it's next month that your latest book, uh, Success is Easy, Shameless, No-Nonsense Strategies to Win Business is released. Is that right? Yes, I'm super excited. Uh, so this month, uh, October, November issue, uh, the book is featured full page in Entrepreneur Magazine. That's my dream oh, as an wow. entrepreneur. Uh, they're actually my publisher. So it's exciting to be on their team and be doing work with them. And uh, it's just they believed in the project from the very first call because uh, they felt that the title was uh, a little edgy. And nobody really yeah. told you that it was being easy, right? <laughs> exactly. So exactly. Nobody ever says that success is easy. Everybody says, well, success is hard, but you take a completely different approach, right? And you actually say success is easy. So what is, uh, what is the genesis of that? And why, is it, why do you feel that you can make that statement? Well, as an entrepreneur, you're always there to push the limits, say things differently, say a bold statement. And I believe, you know, I have every excuse, John, to fail. <laughs> like my whole life, you know, as a terrible student in high school, barely past high school, never attended a day of college, started every business with no knowledge and little money to invest. Um, and you think I'd be a failure, you know, living, living on the streets somewhere. But for some reason, I have been able to succeed in every single thing I have done. Uh, so I put the concepts of how I've done that and how anybody can do that and make success easy for themselves and go on the fast track, no matter what your background is, experience, money, anything. Um, and when I, you know, I've been thinking for a year about the book title and it just wasn't coming mm -hmm. together. My New York agent was just waiting for me to write the book. I kept writing a book and then a, a title and a proposal and it just wasn't working. And I had this dream, you know, when you kind of have this dream, like it's a half dream, like, was that a dream? <laughs> you, know, you, yeah. you wake up with these really great ideas and then you go, that wasn't a good idea. Uh, but yeah. it was kind of like that. And then uh, I, I just knew it was the title. And that's the same thing that happened with Confessions of Shame with Self-Promoters mm -hmm. because, you know, people weren't comfortable with it. But I knew that if you, you know, toot your own horn in the right way, uh, that you would really be more successful. So they actually, the Entrepreneur Magazine, loved the word shameless, and they kind of wanted to bring a little bit of the shameless self-promotion back, kind of updating that. So it's the subtitle, first word in the subtitle, shameless, yeah. no-nonsense strategies to win in business. And that's exactly what the book is all about. So from your point of view, it's obvious that uh, you would say probably the, the biggest obstacle to success is yourself, right? Is your own mindset. Right here, yes. Yeah. And, and the, you know, uh, you use the word shameless and that, I guess a lot of people uh, don't feel comfortable with, number one, they have obviously a lot of self-doubt, suffer from imposter syndrome, and then have a difficulty promoting themselves. So how can people overcome these? Well, I don't even know where that imposter syndrome came from. It was like a new invention. Okay. So that's, yeah. we're just going to get away from that and just say success is easy is the new, <laughs> is the new model. Yeah. Uh, because, it, you know, it, all of us go, you know, have some amount of self-doubt. Don't think that I haven't sure. failed and had self-doubt. Mm -hmm. But my commitment to wanting to achieve success was always so much stronger. And the thing that you have to have in your mind is no matter what gets in your way, if you truly want success, you're going to climb over that obstacle. You're going to knock it down. You're going to push yourself through it. Uh, you're going to move past doomsayers, whether you're yourself or other people around you. Um, I've always just wanted it more. And I think that the reason I wanted success wasn't really just the money. It was, is the feeling of achievement and the feeling of achievement mm -hmm. gave me confidence um, to do more. And that was kind of like a drug to me like this. I want this feeling of success, uh, money and other things come along with it. But one of the uh, chap ch chapters in the book, John, that I think is really important to discuss uh, for a moment is that you must define your own success. And that's right. the thing is when you're trying to have success in your mind that you think other people have for you or what you think success should be, I mean, it should be what you want. 
And when you define it yourself and you get really, really clear on that, um, you can leave a lot of pressure off yourself, first yeah. of all. And you start going in the right directions for the right reasons. Uh, I think that's an incredibly important point for everyone who's who's listening and watching out there is that whole thing is defining your own success. Because I think you're correct. I think a lot of people fall into that trap of uh, thinking that there are expectations other people have or letting other people define what success looks like for them. And then clearly they often won't achieve that. And so it looks like they're failing, but it's it's not their success. It's not their idea of success. And they've never really sat down and defined what they really want. Exactly. How many people have you ever heard talk about much less success is easy, but talk to you about well, how do you define success? And then, mm. you know, when I asked that question to so many people as I was writing the book, it was just shocking that every single person had a different concept to it. And one actually told me something very interesting. She said, it's changed at least three times in my life, depending where I'm at in my life. Mm. And you know, if it's a lifestyle, if it's money, you know, it changes. Yeah, no, and I agree, because I actually was thinking about that while you were mentioning it is that I even look back at myself, I, I could tell you that my definition of success has changed a number of times. And my definition of success now is very different than it was once upon a time. But just coming back to another point, we were just saying about uh, it's down to yourself, right? I think I, and, and I love that word shameless, but I think it's people need to understand that if you're not your biggest cheerleader, who's going to be right? Exactly. You can't sit around and wait for somebody else to promote you, can you? Right. If you're not going to believe in what you're doing enough to toot your own horn, you know, nobody's going to do it for you. And the thing is that, that there's an art and a science to that, John. And I, I, mm -hmm. I really have learned it because I don't, I think I was probably shameful when I started, like just pushing, <laughs> you know, you push yourself on people, your ideas. Right. It can't be like that. There has to be a way where you connect in your head and your heart together and you come from a place of service. So if you are offering a service or you're selling something you totally believe in that's going to help people, then why wouldn't you want to help people? And you come from that, that place of really service um, and really feeling that it's so authentic and real that you hardly get turned away. And you learn to ask for more because you start getting more. And that's all part of the process as well. There's a whole chapter on getting your asking gear, asking for more. And, and you know, salespeople need to know that for sure. Yeah, no, no, abs absolutely, 100%. And, um, you know, just looking at some of the things that pop out, uh, you know, from the book is I love this idea of the flip-flop zone, right? Because I do think uh, that, number one, making decisions for a lot of people is very hard, right? Uh, because when you, you know, when you select something, you by default unselect other things, and we don't like to do that. But then, like you say, when you finally do make decisions and a lot of people will start second guessing them and then go back on them, go back and forth. So talk to me a little bit about how the flip flop zone really affects people. Well, you know, that's like doubt and, and, and excuses come up. There's a whole section on the lame excuse zone, like get rid of the lame excuses. You know, I hear people say, I'm broke. I don't have money. I'm like, oh, I just, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. And people are saying such negative things because it's so, it sounds so hurtful to me. Like, why would you put yourself in that position saying that? Because when you say negative, lame excuses, then you're sticking yourself into that category and you stay there and it just gets worse. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where it flip flops. Like, well, I really want to be successful, but... I have this excuse or I really want to be successful, but I'm kind of scared of it. You know, people are afraid of success as much as they are a failure. And, and that to me makes no sense at all because success, when you define it the way you want it, it just gives you choices so that when you're really, when you are successful, you can say yes and no to the opportunities that you want. And I said yes to be here with you today because I believe in your show, I believe in what you're doing. And I wanted to be here to connect because I know that, People, especially in sales, have that mindset thing. You know, one day they're on a high. You know, like yesterday, I sold a $20,000 mentorship program. And right. today, because of health issues, she has to back out. She'll come in when it's right, hopefully. Sure. And I hope for her health. All I care about now is that she's healthy and it's good. And there'll always be another space. I didn't feel for one second bad about that because it's just a space for another person to come in when you're doing the right things. And you have to feel that way about sales because, you know, it's as in sales, we get this high and that low. And that's really that flip flop thing. Or am I good enough? Why do they come in? Is it about me? I mean, there's so many things you can go through, but it's just another day. And 
another opportunity. And I believe that if we're not leaving space for the right people to come in, the right opportunities to come in, the wrong opportunities come in and the doubt comes in as well. Yeah, and and it's funny you were mentioning like that that idea of the the fear of success because I I was I was writing a blog post or something recently about that because that is that is such a powerful thing and more prevalent than people think. It's like and I've seen it with people I know who I've helped with things in the past is, you know, they want something but then they say oh. But if I get it, then this might have to change and that might have to change. And they almost like talk themselves out of even it. And I'm like, we haven't even got there yet. So right. I don't know why you're worrying about those outcomes. Yeah, or why should I try? Because I've yeah. failed so many times before. Why is this going to be different? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's so sad that we, you know, we have these beliefs and, you know, these beliefs go way back to childhood. And believe me, when I'm looking at that magazine, Entrepreneur Magazine, my biggest mm -hmm. dream, I didn't even have a clue of how I was going to get in there. I just would look at it every day and think about, wow, if I get my book in there. I didn't even know there were publishers back then. And they only take on 10 new authors a year. So it's not like it's an easy thing to achieve. But the thing is, I look at that and part of me is just staring at that picture going, is that really me? Like, mm -hmm. do I belong here? Um, you know, I'm, a, I'm just this girl that really, you know, didn't really grow up with entrepreneurial parents, didn't really have much experience. I grew up in a tough environment in Gary, Indiana, you know, learned from a tough business environment. Um, it was just like, you kind of look at that, and you put yourself way back there, not like all the achievements you have. Yeah. But for a second, you just have to snap out of it and go, oh my gosh, I'm so blessed that I have the skills and the knowledge and the kind of friends and experts that I surround myself. I'm blessed, but I did that. And that is why I wanted to give something more. And obviously what I'm saying is making a difference because people are paying attention. And yeah. so we have to then talk ourselves into the success that we deserve. Yeah, and, and it's a good point to also that you just raised there is that idea is that I think when we look back, as you say, I think we often overlook the successes that we've had and we don't really, I mean, I think sometimes it's good to sort of look at the path that you traveled and go, wow, look at all the things that I overcame to get where I am. Yeah, I may not be where I wanna be right now, but look, I've proven that I can be successful at different points. Now I just have to focus on the next one. Right. And it's levels, you know, success takes levels. So if you're having little baby steps of success, you're mm -hmm. moving forward in the right direction. You need to give yourself encouragement for that and congratulate yourself for every success you have along the way. And if you're doing that, you're probably moving into other circles of other people, the people that are think higher and level than you. I mean, I always think they want to be the dumbest person in the room because that's when you're really learning, you know, and I've, mm -hmm. I've just had such incredible mentors in my life from a very young age that just took me under their wings and allow me to fly along with them. And I think that's really why I wanted to be a mentor and write books. Mm -hmm. I mean, I never thought I'd be an author, right? Uh, but, you know, nine books later, it's like nine babies <laughs> birthing them. <laughs> and, <laughs> <laughs> you know, especially getting them out. That's like, you know, I feel like it's yeah. uh, usually takes about nine months, you know? So mm -hmm. the thing is that, uh, you know, I have that passion of helping people. There's my thing is that I really feel that when I get something like success, I think, Oh my gosh, I am so thankful and I feel blessed and grateful for it. Now, who can I share it with? Mm -hmm. So I congratulate myself. I feel grateful for it. And then I share it with somebody. And let me tell you, I've shared Entrepreneurial Magazine the opportunity with one of my VIP clients. He's a multimillionaire. He's wrote another book. And I wrote his first page. I came up with a book title for him, wrote a page, a synopsis, set up the interview. He just got his contract. So uh, he will have a book. Excellent. Him and his wife, he had both clients of mine, him and his wife will have a book uh, called The uh, Business Game Changer coming out next year. So I'm just, I got just as excited when that opportunity happened for them. Yeah. And, and what I like about what you're saying too, is I think that not enough people search out mentors, right? I mean, whether it's, it's just somebody who can give you some input and guidance or whether it's um, hiring a professional like yourself. Personally, it's one of my, uh, it's, it's one of my soapboxes here, as I always say is, um, you know, most of us invest we invest probably quite a lot of money in all of our hobbies, right? Regardless of what they are, you know, probably in golf lessons or whatever, tennis lessons, whatever your hobby is. 
but invest almost zero money in the thing that puts bread on our table, right? So I always encourage people is go out, uh, you'll find a coach, find a mentor and invest a little of your money over there because it'll pay in the long run. Most definitely. Those were my professors, right? I mean, it didn't matter mm -hmm. if I went to college. My professors are people that are doing it. I would find somebody that's doing something that's successful and I would say, no, I want to go that shortcut. I want to go there. And so yeah. they would help me achieve that, you know. So let me turn my phone down here. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, and, and so it only makes sense that if somebody's been where you want to be to work uh -huh. with them and you have to continually invest in what you're doing. Yeah, and plus it gives you somebody outside of your situation, right? It gives you a third party view, a a um, somewhat detached view, because some because sometimes you're so caught up in your own in your own stuff or in whatever surrounds you within your 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 work or your life. Oh, well, most definitely. I mean, you can only think so far, and see, we all have this mental cap. Although you can't see it, it's invisible. But this mm. cap sits on your head and says, this is all you know, this is all the success you're going to achieve. And you have to loosen up the cap and say, I'm coachable to let more information come in there. <laughs> and it has to be other people's experiences. What you mm. learn from entrepreneurs and very successful people is not just like how to do something, it's like their personal experiences. Let me tell you what didn't work so that I can take away some of that pain for you. Like you want to continue to make mistakes or you want to work with somebody who's already been through that and gives you the shortcut. I mean, the investment is just nothing because the return is massive. So, you know, one skill alone that I wanted to learn was how to speak and then make an offer. So that's different because I've been a professional speaker getting paid to speak for many mm -hmm. years. So I found somebody who was doing phenomenal at this. And I said, how did you learn it? She said, I paid a mentor $25,000 to walk me through every one of my slides, coach me, and it made a huge difference. Like, I could never have learned this. And I said, how, how do I, who do I make the check out to? Like, I, I could not decide as quick, as fast as I could to work with that person to learn it. And it was, the return on investment was massive. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and the thing is, the return on investment just isn't one time. Once you yeah. have that skill and that knowledge, it's over and over and over for the rest of your life. No, absolutely. And one last thing I just wanted to mention there uh, is speak your mind and stick to it, right? I, I, I like that one as well, because I think that often we're reluctant to speak our minds and also reluctant to put it out there. Because when you verbalize something and people hear it, it's kind of out there and you're kind of like you now have sort of tied your sail to the mast or whatever. <laughs> Well, yes, I never have a problem speaking my mind. So you know, that's yeah. the thing you have to, you can't worry about pleasing everyone. You can't, mm -hmm. in fact, if you're, a, if everyone's a fan of you, then you're not shaking the boat, rocking the boat, mm -hmm. you know, really being bold enough. You're not going there. So it's not about, you know, it, it's not about trying to find a popularity game. It's about mm -hmm. getting noticed in the marketplace and getting awareness of what you do. And when you shake things up and speak your mind, even though some people may not like it, there's a heck of a lot more people that like it, respect yeah. what you do. And that's always been my case is that, you know, mm -hmm. I will say something that a lot of people don't have courage to say, like even saying success is easy. That, that takes courage. Nobody said that before. I'm making a bold statement before that book comes out and I will be challenged on it, I'm sure, and I'm excited, I'm looking forward to that, um, just as I was challenged with shameless, you know, promoting yourself, um, and it made me very, you know, made me very successful and, and uh, made me a lot of money and, and helped a lot of people along the way, and that's my goal. Yeah, this is fantastic. Well, we're, looking, we're running up against the end of our time, Debbie, but before we go, I'd just like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can find out more about you, and the book is out on at the beginning of November. Remember, it's success is easy, shameless, no nonsense strategies to win in business, which will be available on Sales Pop, uh, so you can access it there as well. Right, and uh, you can pre-order it now and uh, get that available to you. So you can go to successiseasybook.com and learn about the book and the media things that are happening, all that great stuff. And to learn more about me and my years of expertise, go to DebbieAllen.com, just like the movie Fame. Remember my name, DebbieAllen.com. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, Debbie, this has been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline, CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Pleasure, John.